This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 121. God wants to do something in your life that you never expected. He wants to show you his power and his love in a way that will change your life forever. So get ready to be surprised because God is waiting to show you what he can do. At the age of 18, I set out to read the entire New Testament in order to disprove Christianity. As I read, I was surprised to find that I became convinced it was true. The last thing that I wanted to do was to become a Christian. I thought that would ruin my life and make it boring by stopping me having any fun. Yet, knowing in my heart that it was true, I felt I had no option but to say yes to Jesus. The moment I did so, to use the words that C.S. Lewis chose to describe his own experience of encountering Jesus, I was surprised by joy. Ever since, Jesus has never ceased to surprise me. God is the God of surprises. Jesus constantly surprised his followers, and he wants to continue to surprise you. From Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Listen to the words of my mouth. Strangers are attacking me. Ruthless people seek my life. People without regard for God. Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name, Lord, for it is good. You have delivered me from all my troubles, and my eyes have looked in triumph on my foes. Surprised by God's help. Even if the attacks are justified or partly justified, it's always surprising when we come under attack from people we do not know. David says, strangers are attacking me. I remember how surprised I was when I first started to read articles by people I'd never met attacking Alpha, HTB, and sometimes me personally. Surprise attacks can come from neighbors, work colleagues, or other sources. What I found even more surprising is how God intervenes to help us. Oh, look, God's right here helping. God is my helper and ally. He sustains me and he brings deliverance from our troubles. As I look back over my own experience, deliverance has not always been instantaneous. It has sometimes taken months or even years. Yet I'm challenged by David's response. In the midst of the attacks, he says, I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. The point of a free will offering was that there was no condition placed on the sacrifice. David did not say that he would only offer a sacrifice if God rescued him. Regardless of the outcome, he resolved to praise the Lord for his goodness. If you are facing an attack right now, put your trust in God, believe that he wants to help you, and praise him in advance. Lord, thank you that one day I will be able to look back and see that you have delivered me from all my troubles. New Testament from John chapter 2. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? 
Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He did not need any testimony about humankind, for he knew what was in each person. Surprised by Jesus. The ministry of Jesus was full of surprises. Jesus is constantly calling you to go deeper in your life with him. He wants to surprise you in new ways. First, surprising abundance. Some might be surprised that not only were Jesus and his disciples invited to parties like the wedding banquet, they actually accepted and went along. At that time, wedding feasts lasted about a week. They were times of great revelry and rejoicing, where people put on their best clothes, rejoiced, sang, danced, joked, laughed and had fun. Perhaps what is even more surprising is that rather than condemning those drinking wine, Jesus transformed over 120 gallons of bath water into the very best wine. Jesus does things abundantly. He wants to give you more and more life and joy. Simply letting Jesus know what the problem was, they have no more wine, and then following his instructions, do whatever he tells you, led to this surprising miracle. Jesus not only answered the need, but he answered it beyond anything they could have expected or even imagined. The master of the banquet was surprised when he tasted the water that had been turned into wine. This is also true in our own lives. Jesus turns the water of life without him into the wine of life with him. I thought that following Jesus would mean a life that was watered down. In fact, it's the very opposite. Jesus constantly surprises us by how he enriches our lives. In particular, we see how he enriches weddings and indeed marriages. He can turn the water of an ordinary marriage into the wine of an enriched one. Jesus transforms drudgery and dreariness into fullness of joy. Through this miracle, Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. For many, this must have been a very surprising revelation. Second, surprising passion. Jesus amazed everybody when he went into the temple courts and found people selling cattle, sheep and doves and others at tables exchanging money. The loan sharks were also there in full strength, made a whip of cords and drove them all out of the temple area. He said, get your things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a shopping mall. His disciples remembered the words, zeal for your house will consume me. We're surrounded by commercialism and seductive images. Huge shopping centers are replacing churches. There's a danger of worshiping money and commerce. There was a terrible temptation then, as there is now, for money-making to interfere with the worship of God. Of course, there's a practical side of worship, both in the temple and in churches today. However, when the object of our focus becomes money, we are in serious trouble. Jesus surprised people by how passionate he was about this. Third surprising dwelling. Jesus redefines the temple. Jesus' body is the true temple. Jesus says to them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The true temple will be destroyed, but God will rebuild it again in three days through the resurrection. They are surprised and cannot understand this. They ask Jesus how on earth he thinks he can rebuild this temple in a mere three days. But John adds, the temple he had spoken of was his body. The temple was important because it was the symbolic dwelling place of God. It was where God and humanity met. These surprising words of Jesus show us that he himself is the new temple. He is the dwelling place of God on earth. Through Jesus, you are now called to be the home, the dwelling place of God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Fourth, surprising wisdom. When people saw the miracles Jesus performed and what he was doing, many believed in his name. But, John tells us, Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He did not need human testimony about them, for he knew what was in people. It is surprising to read that Jesus did not immediately trust these people 
especially when we read that love always trusts. Jesus is realistic about human nature. We tend to look for the perfect spouse, perfect parents, perfect children, perfect friends, perfect leaders, and the perfect church. But these don't exist. All of us are flawed human beings. Recognizing this helps us to be more realistic and less disappointed and more forgiving in our relationships. We need the wisdom of Jesus in our dealings and in our relationships. We need to balance openness and loving trust with the wisdom and understanding of the human heart. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Help me to fix my eyes on him today so he can surprise me afresh with his wisdom, passion, love, and abundance. Old Testament, from Joshua 19 to 21. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the Israelites to designate the cities of refuge, as I instructed you through Moses, so that anyone who kills a person accidentally and unintentionally may flee there and find protection from the avenger of blood. Surprised by humaneness. As Pippa and I have travelled around the world, we've often visited the local prisons. In some countries, the justice system seems to be relatively humane. In other places, the prison conditions and penalties imposed seem inhumane. We're often surprised, even shocked by parts of the Old Testament law. The Israelites would also have been surprised, though, in a different way, because these laws were surprisingly humane by the standards of the time. If a situation arose that seemed to be an accidental homicide, a person could be admitted to a city of refuge. Thereafter, they could stay if after the trial, the avenger failed to prove it was murder. The city had a duty to protect them until it was time for them to return. These laws preserve the sanctity of human life. Every human life is of infinite value to God. When a person's life is taken, even if accidentally, It's a very serious matter. On the other hand, there is a humaneness about these laws that protects the person who's killed accidentally. This humaneness would probably have surprised people at the time. As God's people today, we should, of course, seek to ensure justice, just laws, deterring and reducing crime. But we should also be passionate about ensuring that our justice systems are humane. Lord, help me in my own life and also in society, to work towards just and humane laws. Thank you for your love, compassion, and mercy. Pippa adds, I love weddings. Now all our children are married. There are so many preparations to organize a wedding day. But this passage in John 2 reminds us that the only thing that really matters is that Jesus is there and he even cares about the practical things like the wine running out. We also see here the interaction between Jesus and his mother, which is very touching. And we see already Mary's faith in her son. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you want to surprise me with your power and your love. Help me to be expectant in my life for the good things that you provide me. Help me to ask and also give thanks for everything good in my life today. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you give me. Amen.